Hi, I'm Matt Westwood, and in this series, I'm going to help you ace the general knowledge component of your Amy B exam. In this video, we're looking at the piece Edelweiss, which is list B number three in the series 10 preliminary violin exam book. In a preliminary exam, you need to be able to name and explain the notes, rests, signs, terms, the title, and the key. The way I like to think about it is if there is ink on the page, you need to be able to explain what it means and why it's there. To help you learn these things, I recommend you make a photocopy of the piece and write the meanings down on your copy as we go. Here you'll see my annotated copy of the music and I've whited out everything that we won't be talking about. Starting with notes, I won't be covering letter names in this series, but we will start with note values. This piece has crotchets, which go for one beat, minims, which go for two beats, dotted minims, which go for three beats, dotted crotchets, which go for one and a half beats, and quavers, which go for half a beat. This piece opens with a semi-breve rest, which are rests for the full bar. Usually semi-breves are thought of as four beats, but the semi-breve rest symbol is used for a whole bar rest, even though the whole bar is only three beats long. On to signs and terms. This piece has a time signature of 3-4, which means that every bar has three quarter notes, or three crotchets of value and that each crotchet is considered one beat. In the opening bar, there is a character marking, cantabile, which means in a singing style. Next to that, we get the metronome mark, dotted minimum equals 50. As a dotted minimum is the length of the whole bar, you can think of this as meaning 50 bars per minute. If you consider crotchets to be the beat, you need to multiply that number by three for 150 beats per minute. MP for mezzo piano means moderately soft. MF for mezzo forte means moderately loud. F for forte means loud. There are also dynamics in the form of hairpins. This is a crescendo, which means to become gradually louder. And this is a diminuendo or decrescendo, which means to become gradually softer. A curved line connecting different notes is a slur, meaning to play the notes smoothly connected. On the violin, we do this by playing the notes in one continuous bow. The lines under these notes are tenuto marks, which can mean a few different things. They can mean to hold a note for its full length, or to give the note a slight emphasis. In this piece, it's used each time we get two down bows in a row, and perhaps serves as a reminder to leave a gap in the sound so that these two notes don't sound like one continuous long note. The square-like shape on this note means to play a down bow, and the V shape on this note means to play an up bow. The numbers above the notes are fingerings, and the numbers at the beginning of each line are bar numbers. The piece finishes with a final double bar line to indicate the end of the piece. This score features both violin one and violin two parts connected with a bracket. While you are required to play with piano accompaniment for an exam, this gives you the option of performing or practicing as a violin duet with a friend or teacher. The violin two part starts out pizzicato, which means to pluck the violin, and then changes to arco, meaning to bow the violin. It also features the articulation mezzo staccato, meaning to play moderately detached. On violin, we can do this by playing the two notes in one bow, but stopping or slowing down the bow between each note. The violin two part also features some accidentals placed to the left of the note heads. This natural sign cancels out the C sharp from the key signature, meaning that the note is a C. And this flat changes the note from a B to a B flat. On to the title. An Edelweiss is a type of flower, and it is a popular song from The Sound of Music, which is a stage and movie musical. A musical is a play, movie, or show in which the characters sing. As well as the title, we also have the composer and arranger's name at the top of the page. The composer is the person who originally wrote this piece featured in the musical, and the arranger is the person who made this particular version for two violins, or violin and piano. Finally, on to the key. The key signature has two sharps, F sharp and C sharp, meaning that this piece is either in the key of D major or B minor. The use of Ds throughout, particularly the first note in the violin two part and the last note, tell us that this piece is in the key of D major. 
If you found this video helpful, please consider liking and subscribing. If you think I missed anything or if you have any more questions, leave a comment down below. My name is Matt Westwood and I'll see you in the next video.